Welcome back. Let's do some more examples on vector spaces. Let's say V is a set of functions f such that ft is a cos of xt plus b sin of xt where a, b and t are all real numbers. Then V forms a vector space under the usual addition of functions and multiplication of a function by a scalar. Let's take two functions f and g from V and let's consider two more scalars p and q. Let's take the sum of the two functions f and g and we can see that again gives a function which is similar to the function given above. So the closure with respect to function addition holds. In the same way, if we multiply the function f by alpha, again it belongs to v. Both the closure properties are satisfied. Let's see what is the identity function here. The identity function will be a zero function. 0 into cos xt plus 0 into sin xt. And the inverse of ft will be minus ft. That is minus f of t is minus a cos xt minus b sin of xt. We can check all other properties will also hold and we will form a vector space. What if we take another type of addition and scalar multiplication? If V is a set of points in the plane where addition is defined in such a way that when we add two points in the plane, the end result is two times the first element minus three times the element from the second vector and two times Y plus three times Z minus 2 gives us the second element. How do we multiply elements here? We will first multiply x with the scalar a and add 1 and for the second element we will multiply y by the scalar a and add 2. So let's check whether both the closure properties hold or not. In this type of addition we see that again we get a point in the plane and when we multiply by the scalar again it's a point from the plane. So both the closure properties hold. Identity in this case has to be found. It will not be 0, 0. So what is the role of identity? If we add the identity to the vector, it should give us the point back, the vector back. Let's say we take our identity to be PQ. So when we add XY to PQ, we should get XY back. The way we add is different here. So when we add XY and PQ, according to the rule, we get 2X minus 3P and 2Y 3Q minus 2. Let's equate it to the point XY. All this we are doing to find P and Q. When we solve by equating corresponding elements on both the sides, we get 2x minus 3p is equal to x and 2y plus 3q minus 2 is equal to y. On solving, we get p is x by 3 and q is 2 minus y by 3. So the identity becomes this. pq is x by 3, 2 minus y by 3. Now, Inverse has to be found. So what is the role of inverse? It means when we add the inverse to a vector, it should give us the identity. So we will find the inverse. Let's say the inverse is uv. We'll add uv to xy. We will follow the rule of addition as it has been give, defined. When we add the two points, we get 2x minus 3u, 2y plus 3v minus 2 and we'll equate it to our identity. If we solve by equating corresponding points, we'll get u to be 5 by 9x and we'll get v to be 8 minus 7 by 9. 
So the inverse becomes this. This can always be checked. If we add, we will be getting the identity. All other properties will also hold. So we will form a vector space. Let's take another example. If we take R to be a set of real numbers with ordinary addition, but the scalar multiplication is defined as when we multiply the point x by a, we should get a zero. a belongs to r, that is, a is a real number. This does not form a vector space because if we see last property does not hold. When we multiply x by 1 according to the rule given here, we should get 0. But we do not get 0. We get, uh, we should get our x. In our case, we are getting a 0. So it does not form a vector space. Let's take one more example. What if v is a set of polynomials f and p3 such that when you substitute 2, your function reduces to 0. This forms a vector space under all the standard operations or by standard operations we mean how we add our uh, polynomials and how we multiply a polynomial by a scalar. So if f and g are two polynomials from V, then they will satisfy the property of V, that is F2 will be 0 and G2 will be 0. If we add the two polynomials, we get F plus G2 is F2 plus G2. As both of them are 0, this becomes 0. Closure property is satisfied with respect to addition. Also, the property of scalar multiplication is satisfied. So, we have two properties done. Identity in our case will be the zero polynomial and inverse of f will be minus f. Remaining properties can also be checked and all of them will hold. So v forms a vector space. Thank you.